Good morning, everyone. It is 12 minutes past 7 o'clock right now, and it is Tuesday, which means it's time for a visit from our good friend, Ron the Car Guy. And this is a special segment for those folks that even if you know stuff about cars, uh, stop what you're doing just for a couple of seconds, especially when it comes to tires. Lou here along with James Peterson, meteorologist, Ron the Car Guy, obviously, uh, in all primed and ready to go. And uh, this is something that people are going to sit back and they're going to go, Really? You know, th th this is uh, something that I run into, and, and, and we recently had a, a car in the shop, which kind of prompted uh, this discussion, because I see it from time to time, even within our industry. I mean, other people that work in our industry, um, th the answer to this question isn't what you would think. Now, the question is, all right, I'm going to replace some tires on my car. But I'm only going to replace two. Ron has always told you whenever you're replacing tires, you should probably replace four if you can. That's the best thing to do. Yep. But sometimes you run into you a situation. Can. Yeah, maybe. What would be a situation that you just need uh, two? Uh, maybe you didn't rotate your tires like you should, and, and two of them are, are wore out, and the other two still have good tread. Uh, maybe you slid into a curb uh, because we had bad weather, mm -hmm. and uh, it blew out one or two tires on one side, or you drove over you know, something long on the interstate and blew out a couple on the front. I, I mean, there, there's, there's, there are scenarios where you just need to put two tires on your car instead of four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, because you're getting two tires. Now, question is, where do they go? Do they go on the front? They go on the car, Lou. They go, or yeah. they go on the back. Yeah, they don't go in the glove box. They won't fit <laughs> or in the not trunk. The, not in yeah. the trunk. Yeah. In James's case, you'd put them in the trunk and let somebody else put them on. So. And, and you know, in preparing for this, you know, I, I, I asked, you know, people, uh, you know, what their opinion was. You know, where, where would you put, you know, two new tires? You're putting two on your car. Where would you put them? And, you know, I got a lot of different answers. Well, it depends. Is it front wheel drive? Is it rear wheel drive? Uh, good, oh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the answer then. Then the answer is, if it's a front wheel drive, you put them on the front. If it's rear wheel drive, you put them on the back. And, and that and that is the the common thought process or the or, or the common answer that you hear. Uh, but the correct answer is, regardless of if it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, they go on the rear of the vehicle always, always. Always, if you're installing only two tires, you always put them on the rear of the vehicle. Even if the tires that are that you're gonna that stay with your vehicle aren't as in good a shape as the new ones you're putting on. Well, you bring up a great question. Um, if you're concerned that the other two tires aren't gonna have very good <laughs> traction, get four. You probably better be getting four. Okay. Yeah, but but we're in the scenario where just two. Yeah, yeah. If the, the other two tires are 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 fifty percent or more tread, I mean they're in good shape. Um, those go on the front and the new tires always go on the rear. And, and here's why. Um, a lot of the weight of the vehicles on the front of the car. I, I mean, on any car anymore. Mm -hmm. And in the rear, yeah. in the rear tires, when you go to apply the brakes. People, people think about tires as traction. That's what gives them traction and makes the car go. It's also what stops the car. Your brakes don't stop the car. The only thing between that car and the pavement is the tire. Mm -hmm. And so if the tires on the rear don't grip as well as the tires on the front, the rear wheels are going to lock up and the back end of the car is going to come sliding around. So you're going to get out of control. Exactly. You're, it, and that's going to happen in wet pavement. It's going to happen on snow, on ice. You're going to lose control of the car. You're, you're going to spin out because when you apply the brakes, the front apply, uh, the front tires are, have traction, the rear tires have less, and it'll cause the back wheels to lose traction. The car will spin around. And you can go to, you can go to YouTube. There's, there's a dozen videos out there. Uh, Michelin USA has probably one of the best ones. And, and they show, they take a car and they put two new tires on the front and like 50% tread tires on the rear. Okay. And, they, and they have a driver go out on, onto a skid pad and they show exactly what happens. And then they reverse it, reverse it around and, and go do the same now, scenario. Has that changed at all with four-wheel disc anti-lock brakes? Um, to some extent, but, but you got to remember the, the anti, that's a great question. The anti-lock brakes only have so much ability and mm -hmm. and even on my, on my own vehicle that has good tires and and, and, there, and there's no issues uh you know back a, a week week and a half ago when we had the snow and, and the slick conditions and stuff like mm -hmm. that um i would apply my brakes 
and and the vehicle did slow down, but it still wanted to kind of slide over to the you right. You could feel it wanting to skate it, it, over. Yeah, you could you could feel it going, but but they mm -hmm. only have they only have a certain amount of of uh, uh, control, and so uh, the, the answer to that question is uh, anti-lock brakes. Um, aren't a replacement for tread on your tires. Because they can ultimately, only do so much. The, ultimately, the anti-lock brakes are going to slow the wheel down, but not the tire making contact it, it, with, yep, with the yep, pavement it, or it, the ground. It, 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 it has limitations. Mm -hmm. It definitely has, has limitations as to what it can do. It can create a controlled stop or a more controlled stop but um, if, if, you're, if you're losing traction, you're, you're losing traction. Okay, so now what about this situation? Uh, of course, so we haven't seen a major amount of snow around here yet. Snow is coming. We keep saying that snow tires are the answer to get around easily. Do you always replace four snow tires? And exactly for the exact same reason. The, okay. the, the, the snow tires uh, are, are going to have far superior traction mm -hmm. over an all-season Because we just talked tire. snow tires here. A absolutely, yeah. okay. absolutely. And... and We've got the same situation. You know, people think of tires as traction, and they think of it as ride, but it's also what stops your car, mm -hmm. and it's what turns your car. And so, if you are going to put, uh, you know, a dedicated winter tire or a dedicated snow tire on that vehicle, uh, do it in sets of four. Okay, so snow tires four, like we talked yep. about previously on the show. But if you're only replacing two, you can quit, folks. I'd quiz some other people. Quiz your mechanic. See if your mechanic knows about this. But the answer is, if you're only replacing two tires on your vehicle, where do you put them on? You put them on the rear. There it is. <laughs> you know, I, I asked the the person that came in that had the two new tires on the front. I'm like, how come these are on the front, not on the rear of your car? And she goes, the place I bought them at argued with me, too. They swore that they needed to go on the rear. But she goes, I have a front-wheel drive car. I need these on the front. And, and, and I mean, that, that just isn't it. And, and then one other thing to throw in there, if you have four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. put on four. Period. Be yeah, because if you have a difference, if you have one that's half war and a brand new tire, the outside circumference of that tire is a difference. And it's going to cause problems in the in the transfer case in the four wheel drive. So, system. question for you: Sim Something happened similar to this with my wife's car. She had uh, not very many miles on her car. It was a pretty new car. Got a blew out a tire. Got a got a nail in a tire. So sure. the tire couldn't be patched. Had to be replaced. Run flat tires. Uh, should she have replaced all? Should we have replaced all four of those? I mean, we're talking only like ten thousand miles on the tire. No. Or just replace that one and, was fine. And, and I and I hate giving people leeway, but but ten thousand miles, fifteen, eighteen thousand, fine. You get much over twenty, and and there's an issue. And and okay. you can always just put a tape measure around the outside of the old tire and the new tire and if there's a check the stagger exactly there all you right. go the all stagger right. race any terms. other questions <laughs> get a hold of ron the car guy he'll be able to give you all the answers you need 225-9090 or ask ron the car guy dot com that's just that simple we will be right back it's 20 minutes past seven o'clock you're watching cw iowa live in west des moines